Now let's jump into <laughs> the comments. Ah, the comments. Always good stuff. Let's see. Gas fees. I have a great friend in Rome named Derek. Biggest things. Interesting. Let's see. How did I miss everyone? Ah, yeah. <laughs> Rob, can you give the new token, please? So long. I don't know. Lexi. Yeah, Rob, thanks, Buzz Daily. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Taiwan, the China situation. Thoughts? Nancy Pelosi was a pretty ballsy move just to go out there and just say, I don't care what uh, Xi Jinping from China says. I don't care what the, my, my, the Democratic pr uh, president of the United States says, which is in my same party. I'm just going to go over there anyhow. I don't know if there was a, a thought to that of why to do that instead of just uh, of like a show of, I don't know. I, I, I don't see the strategy there except just to, just to entice things. I don't know. Uh, Bill Bones, Rob, you're all doom and gloom. Well, Bill, I mean, look, this is what I see. This is like, yeah, I understand. Like, do I think that this is going to last forever? I don't. I'm actually quite happy that it's like this because I believe in the four-year cycles and I believe that there's signs all around us. And I hate, you know, when people will say, well, I hate it when you're doomy and gloomy. I wish you'd be a little more upbeat. I am upbeat. I mean, really? I'm just bringing you the honest parts of the news of, of what I think is going on. Could I be wrong? Yeah, I've been wrong plenty of times, right? I mean, who called 150K Bitcoin in 2021? I did. Who told you that VGX was going to go 30 bucks? I did. Uh, na name your poison. I've been wrong many a time. So could I be wrong again? Absolutely. I mean, every, every, I know Ben talks about all models are wrong and some are useful. But I think you can say that for people. I think all people are wrong and some are useful. So in all honesty, could I be wrong? Sure, I could be wrong. But I just, the things that I see around it, around me and the things that are going on and the news that I see and absorb, it just seems like it's not a very positive, bullish market right now. I mean, there is positivity for, for bearish market, which is everybody gets to build, they get to grow, they get to adapt. The bad projects get flushed out. All the people that uh, are getting hacked, they're going to learn from all those things and they can move forward. There is the good and the bad. But uh, right now, I think we're in a, in a more of a bearish situation than a bullish situation. That's all. Twisted said, yes, keeping it real. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. You and James are yin and yang. Yin and yang, yeah. Uh, Ah, price holding up well, considering the negative days of the late initial one. Tommy's got a great point. See, as, as bad as I think it is, like I said, the market's still very resilient. Bitcoin's not below 20K. It's not 15K. It's not 12K. But I think there's some things out on the horizon. So right now, the sea looks a little chop. But if you look out over the horizon, you can see some, some big waves coming in. That's how I see it. But... Who cares? Like, what if I am wrong? Like, if I'm wrong and everything starts to shoot up from here and goes to the moon, whatever, whatever you're like, oh, Rob, I hate you because you, you know, you said, you said that uh, we're going to go down. No, I think everybody would be pretty happy. Like, well, I was dollar cost averaging anyhow. So that was it. I just, uh, I think people will be okay. Now, if I'm right and Bitcoin goes Bitcoin, the entire crypto market does go down. Traditional markets fall. Housing market, the bubble pops and, and, and then unemployment rates rise. I think it'll be, it'll be okay because when I was talking about these things, maybe you did your own research and really did your, a deeper analysis and go, you know what? I, I agree with these things here and I'm going to hold on to some more cash and I'm going to just be a little more responsible and maybe uh, buy selectively and spread things out because I know that there is a storm coming. And that's okay. I think it's better to be cautious these days. That's all. <laughs> maybe gross. He was there to try to corrupt them. <laughs> ah, that's a good, I don't know. You know what that, with that, um, 
a chips bill, whatever it's called, that passed. Wasn't Pelosi going to twine to a current chip manufacturer set of factories in America? That'd be interesting. I wonder what the incentives would be because it's not like the labor force is going to be any cheaper over here. Have you uploaded the Satoshi Island interview or I missed it? You missed it. It was on Saturday. So just go, well, click on Digital Asset News and you'll find it. And it just says Satoshi Island or something like that. Ah, yes. What green screen and software are you using for your backdrop for the pool in your mom's basement? This is, uh, so this green screen, it's, um, I got it from uh, Crazy for Cryptos. He does also green screens, but they're m much, much bigger. They're huge. And uh, he gave me one that's a third of the size, which just makes it look enormous. And uh, the software is the same one I'm using right now. Yeah, very simple. Yeah, back doors. God, I, I should have done a video on Nancy Pelosi. Everybody, <laughs> everybody wants to know. Pelosi was on a girl's night out. That's funny. It was ballsy. Yeah, Twisted's got a good point. Some YouTubers leading the lambs of slaughter dismissing the soul's hacks. VCs are don't care about the retail investor. Remember Luna? I don't know. When there's, where there's smoke, there's fire. There's a lot of issues that come up with Solana. There's the slowdowns. Some people say that there's just the grand reset. They can just tell all their, all their nodes or their uh, validators to just reset everything which I think is a security issue if you can do th those types of things. Like Cardano couldn't come out and tell all the stake pool operators, hey, everybody just reset everything. This just wouldn't work. It can't happen like that. That I know of. No, I could be wrong. But, uh, and then we have these hacks. Again, this is the hacks in the ecosystem. I don't know exactly if that's related to the underlying Solana, the what's what's what would be the foundation or what was being built on it it's just like with with cardano and sunday swap when sunday swap had a problem when they first you know were out the gate and everybody was saying how slow it was and how there was a, this concurrency issue cardano was like this isn't our fault look we made it we made the base layer so you can build on it if you're going to screw up that part that's on you not on us and of course they work together and now it works better but uh, I mean, I'm always very hesitant to, to blame the underlying protocol if it is just the ecosystem. But it seems like it's a lot of parts of these ecosystems. It's not just one particular project. So just saying, I don't know. It's not like I'm going to go and go, you know what's a good time? I'm just going to sell my house and kidneys and put it all in the Solana. That's wouldn't this not the time. But some people might look at this and be like, oh, this is the greatest time of all time. Ah, hey, Tesla, how's it going? Yeah, whatever happened to Sunday stuff? I don't know. I guess they're still around. I don't, we don't really hear about them too much. Uh, MicroStrategy and Sailor. Yeah, so Sailor stepped down as the uh, CEO. He's not going to be the chairman. Now he's, they've already got a CEO in place so he can focus more on Bitcoin acquisition. I think that's what he wanted to do anyhow. So good for them. Let's see how it works out. I don't know the earnings came out. I don't think they were that great, but. <laughs> oh, Beardy. Beardy says EOS is Bitcoin 3.0. Man, I got to tell you, when you should have been here in 2017. I don't know if you were Beardy, but EOS was like the biggest thing in 2017. It was going to be, it was going to, it was the real ETH killer. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, Diesel, me and Diesel are on the same page. I'm becoming a Bitcoin maxi. Lexi says, have you ever thought about doing a business mentorship program for people? No. Uh, this is, this would be the best thing for me. I got a, a lot of more things to do and I'm really behind on a bunch of stuff. Which leads me to the next point. I might be taking a break from, from YouTube for a bit just to get some other stuff done. I'll let everybody know. Uh, hello. <laughs> Do you think Trump will run again in 2024 election? I know he wants to. We'll see if he does it. 
Yeah, Marty McFly, or Crypto McFly says a good point. Robbie, maybe it's a good time to start talking about privacy coins that haven't been hacked once, like Monero. Maybe so. A lot of projects that haven't been hacked yet. Yet. So Monero is still around. That's for sure. Uh, Geraldo says, makes one of Georgia's two videos a day almost every day. George doesn't do two, he does three. And he's got like two other channels. I don't know how he does it either. I think he's got kids. And that's that. Uh, it's like dumping all over Tron, but who sends USDT on ETH when it's a dollar to send over TRX? That's true. And you know what? As much as people talk trash about Tron, uh, if you take a look since 2017, Tron's pretty much in the same position as it was back then. It really hasn't moved a ton. So, Brendan says, they say the problem isn't with Soul itself, but all these hot wallets. But that's basically meaning Soul is moving too fast developers to maintain security. It's pretty bad. Well, yeah, but then then the question is, then who's the, who's at fault? Is it is it Solana, the, the, the protocol, or is it the, the, the ecosystem that built on top of Solana? The way I think about it is this, and I don't know the answer. I don't. But if you have, let's say you have two companies, and one company just lays the concrete foundation for a house, and it's perfect, it's great, or it's pretty good. And uh, then somebody comes out, and they build the house on top of it, and they use the wrong frame, they use the wrong type of wood. Uh, there's holes in the uh, in the roof. Uh, who do you blame? Do you blame the, the the foundation, or do you blame the people that built the crappy house? I don't know if that's ex the correct analogy, but uh, that's kind of how I'm looking at things right now. Of course, the same thing will be true. Like, well, what if what if the foundation had cracks in all the way along? And then the house is built decently, but of course the foundation broke down. It just depends. Uh, <laughs> who's putting his savings on an iOS app on their phone? I don't know. <sighs> I don't know. Yoon, I have not had issues with Exodus, but I also keep it offline most of the time. It makes sense. Lexi says, when do you think blockchain will be more commonly used in other sectors, like more mainstream real estate, medical field, education? When you don't know that you're using blockchain, that's pretty much what it is. Here's an example. I'm going to show you a website. Tell me if you think this is based on blockchain. Bring this up. So you've heard me talk about this. This is trueflation. Shoot, inflation's going up again. Damn it. So what this website does is it uses Chainlink as an oracle uh, to pull an outside data. And it pulls from 30 different sectors or three different data points. And it gives us a real accurate type of uh, representation of what inflation is doing right now. There's a link in the description. I also have a link when I talk to Stefan, the CEO of this company and they explain exactly why they did it and where it's going and how they actually are gonna monetize this uh, with working with a lot of different uh, industries. So they did this for US and then just last week they did this for, golly, UK is way up. Well, it went down a little bit, but yeah, but can you tell this is using the blockchain? You can't, you have no idea. And that's Lexi is when you're gonna see mass adoption. When you use it and you don't even know you're using it and there's gonna be some kind of killer app and that's where it all comes down to. That's why I think like as much as people poo poo all over it, I still think that uh, play to earn gaming and move to earn are gonna be, that's what's gonna bring us into more mass adoption than uh, you know, Bitcoin becoming the world reserve currency. I think it'll be faster if you want the other way. All right. Under, under no circumstances will my bridge ever see a bridge. 
Ooh. Yeah, gas and fees. Only 5,500. I've been feeling really, really tired lately. So I've been doing a lot of things. So when I do that, everything else suffers. And that's one of them. So like this morning, I really didn't do a good job. I didn't really, I didn't even work out, didn't do much. So I'm just getting a little bit down. <laughs> Yeah. I do love this is, you know, this is the only part. This isn't the only part. This is my favorite part of the whole show. The news is just the news just to get me here. So, yeah. Bitcoin geek moved around, but where does the money come from? Let me ask you this. How is YouTube able to, to, to have... Uh, hundreds and thousands of hours of, of video content uploaded every single day. How are they able to pay their creators? How are they able to use cloud service to store all this data, all this, all these videos? How do they do that? It's advertising. Like when you came in here, you probably had to click on a stupid ad, right? It's the same thing with uh, with Sweatcoin. So they their product is already a freemium service. So when you go on, on there, there's going to be ads for different products that you can buy using your sweat coins, which isn't even a crypto until, until September. That's the first part. The second one is they have an upgrade service where you can pay like 20 bucks a year. No, $24.99 per year. And you get double the sweat coins for what you, just what you step. That's just the first part. The next part will be an actual exchange where you can exchange your sweat coins for whatever crypto that you want. Then there's going to be the staking service. Oh, and all also, all this data that they're collecting on you in Sweatcoin, do you know that they don't sell that? Unlike Facebook, which I'm still waiting for my check from, from Zuck from all the data that he sold to all the advertisers. I don't think I'm ever going to get that check. I'm just kidding. There's no check coming. But with Sweatcoin, they go, yeah, we have a ton of your data, but we uh, feel that that's your data. If you want to monetize it, you can do so later on. And that's the whole point of the whole app. So all these things that you're asking me there's a link in the description it says sweatcoin you can join me and there's a deep dive video it's about it's about 50 50 minutes long it's quite long but i think it's gonna be very the product's gonna be very well what's up gentlemen i was on this great show yesterday sin city crypto robin and david is great got to talk about some things they they live in las vegas where i used to live well i i, I lived in hendertucky henderson as they call it over there and uh, but it's the same thing, it's just an outskirts. But yeah, this these guys were great. Check out their show, Sin City Crypto. <laughs> so yeah, Brennan says sweat sounds like a lot like pie, which some some people think is a pyramid, but I have lots of pie. I ever and they say they're going to wallet soon. You think pile over to market? Don't know, no idea. Good thing about with Sweatcoin is let's just say for instance that. They never go to wallet. It doesn't work out for some god and godful reason. I have no idea. The great thing is that it's free. So, like for me, like what I got for free was there's the there's like a language app, and I bought some earbuds, which was like 50% off just using my my sweat tokens. Also, it kind of motivates me to get off my duff. So, on, in that regard, I'm like, eh, it's not so bad. And of course, if it just fails, well, it fails. But uh, didn't cost you anything. All you get to do is space on your phone and walk around a little bit. But as far as the Brandon, I don't know pie. Mm. <laughs> the next step with the Brave browser making a script that walks for you. Yeah. Uh. Kelkshis. It's a great name. A bridge in crypto is a misnomer in my view because funds typically don't cross. Something's happening. Bridges seem to like be the next great thing for hackers. <laughs> Sweatcoin is a con. Well, I tend to disagree, but maybe I'm wrong. Let's see. Crypto man. Nope. Let's see. That's it. All right, everybody. That's it for me. I'm going to go take a break. I got to go do some... Mild construction at my sports facility, so I gotta get out of here. Anyhow, if you like today's video, thumbs up, that'd be great. 
Uh, also consider subscribing and uh, we'll talk about news every day. And I'm going to put out, just so you know, the heck did I put it? I'm doing a new video about uh, the 20, the eventual 2025 bull run. I, I call it the, the, the 2024, 2025 bull run. And there's some drastically different things. I'm going to do this one than 2021. I think every bull run, I've learned a little bit more. Like in 2017, I didn't know anything. 2021, at least I got a good amount out, but not as much as I should have. In 2025, I'm looking to be 90% out of crypto. So I'll let you know in a bit. Anyhow, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.